Evening folks and welcome back to the WTF. Long time no see. Uh, been busy with all sorts of other projects, work related. So haven't done a video for a while but we're still here, we're still doing stuff and on the bench I have got something a little bit different to what we're usually used, used to from the WTF. So we're going all solid state and I have on the bench a solid state linear amplifier which I am going to show you. This is a project I've been working on for the last, oh, I don't know, few weeks. I've uh, been playing around with uh, designing my own PCBs and uh, all that sort of Gucci stuff and hopefully uh, this little rig which I've built up, uh, which I do know does work, I'll be able to sort of put into a box and uh, be able to use as part of the uh, the station. Not that I'm in short supply of linear amplifiers, as I, as you know from my previous projects, we've got several hu humongous uh, valve linear amplifiers. But uh, I thought I would sort of accept the uh, the challenge of trying to build a solid state linear amplifier without uh, blowing it all to bits because I know they're terribly fragile things. Anyhow, so let's have a quick look, and I will show you what I've been doing. So folks, a bit of a close up on this project. This is a potentially 600 watt inverted commas MRF 300 LD MOS linear amplifier, solid state as you can see. So no vacuum tubes. This is all modern tech. Uh, and uh, it's loosely based uh, on uh, Razvan uh, Fatu's um, MRF 300 linear amplifier. So if anybody wants the circuit, if you uh, Google MRF 300 or Razvan Fatu, uh, he's got a, an excellent website, QRP blog, and he designed this amplifier a few years ago as part of an NXP. NXP are the people who make these transistors and they put a competition out and he designed uh, a linear amplifier for radio amateurs uh, which uh, I think he got second place as far as I can remember. Now these MRF 300s which as you can see are, are in push-pull now they're, they're, as far as LD MOS transistors are concerned they're sort of um, well they're certainly considerably cheaper than the sort of standard uh, LD MOSs which a lot of people use for building linear amplifiers such as BLF 188s and etc etc which usually cost a couple of hundred quid each. These are about if you go on Farnell I think RS sell them and DigiKey and Mouser they're about after you paid VAT probably about 60 quid each thereabouts and so they're considerably cheaper they're not you know um, cheap as chips but they are cheaper than uh, uh, some of the other LD MOSs and they do produce a useful bit of power and they're s supposed to be fairly rugged in terms of you know taking a bit of abuse uh, having said that I still have managed to blow up uh, one of them which I've replaced now <clears throat> so what you can see here is the uh, printed circuit board which I designed on KiCad and, I, and again it is more or less based on uh, Razman's uh, design although I've sort of taken some bits out and uh, added one or two extras but the essential is that type of design so if you're interested in building one that's where you need to go uh, so what we've got just to show a few things here so we've got the RF input here and then a 3dB attenuator because these transistors, these MOSFETs, don't like too much RF on their gates, so <clears throat> this is a 3D attenuator, so the whole idea of this is to use it with my Ellicraft K3, so with the power turned right down. So this is the input matching transformer, and then most of the circuitry around here is the bias control, which is fairly straightforward, you've got a standard LM317 voltage regulator there, and a couple of potentiometers. I mean, this is 
a sort of standard design which most people use. This device here, let's just see if we can zoom in a little bit. Just alter the position. This is a LM35D temperature sensor which bolts onto a uh, copper spreader which is what the, the, the MOSFETs are bolted to and then obviously the heatsink. And then this section here is really the, all the output. So you've got two RF chokes and these uh, cores are uh, lead uh, 28 one thousands if that's correct about 11 or 12 turns and then you've got uh, separate uh, 12 volts uh, sorry 48 volts uh, DC coming into each uh, transistor to the drains of each uh, transistor and then these here are what we call uh, <clears throat> transmission line transformers to convert the impedance of the output of the transistors to match the 50 ohm and then here and here the two outputs of each the drains of each transistor and then you've got a ballon which sort of combines them both uh, to get the RF output so that's more or less the amplifier in a nutshell and uh, it's there's a couple of things you have to be wary of with these transistors which I've discovered first of all you have to really make sure that they're properly heat synced now at the moment this is actually a lash up board this board that I designed did have a few um, mistakes in it which so I, which I've corrected and I'm, I'm actually waiting for uh, the, the, the corrected boards to come from PCB way which um, are very good if you want PCB manufa um, PCBs manufactured I, I will plug them I'm not sponsored by them but the service from PCB Way has been very good. They've, um, you know, I upload the Gerbers and they come back within a week. And uh, the, the quality of them is, is very good. And they usually give you a bit of advice if there's any minor mistakes that they can they can correct. Uh, so, um, so this this board did have a one or two errors uh, of my own, which I had a few wires crisscross, which were in the right place. So I've actually corrected those, and I'm going to get another board and uh, the final board uh, the final setup will go into a into a box and the plan is with this is to um, we're not going to use this heat sink because I don't think it's really big enough we're going to use a water cooling setup to make sure that everything's kept nice and cool so that's the uh, that's the plan what I'll do is I'll give you a quick demo just to show that it does actually work we, we're getting a pretty good amount of power out of this thing um, you know for, for not uh, too much drive and as I said you do have to be careful about driving this you mustn't crank up the power uh, otherwise you will um, blow the FETs up so unlike valves which can take quite a bit of, a, of abuse these um, MOSFETs are a bit delicate things really so anyhow let's turn our attention to the watt meter and let's see how much power we can get out of this little beastie so at the moment I've got my Elecraft connected up to the MRF 300 amplifier pallet. I think that's the, the word that the guys use. My RF pallet. And we are running, if you can see that, 5.05 5 watts. And then it goes into that 3 dB attenuator. So uh, we do have some uh, leeway, I think. I think I think the maximum drive on, the, on one of these things is uh, about 5 watts. You probably don't want to go any, any anything higher than that. Uh, otherwise, you risk damaging the the MOSFETs. So we are on 5 watts. I don't want to push it anymore. And uh, the output is via there now that SMA connector you you might be saying oh those look a little bit puny for half a kilowatt um actually uh Razvan uses those on his design and apparently they are pretty good for um almost up to a kilowatt and apparently 
I didn't know this, but Hibbling, who are a well-known top-end manufacturer of amateur radio equipment in Germany, apparently use those. So if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me. So we are using those. They are quite nifty, actually. They're a little bit smaller than standard SO259, so they're actually not too bad. Anyhow, so we're going into the bird meter, the trusty bird meter. So let's key it and see how many watts we're getting. So we're almost at 500 watts. Key down. It's not too bad. I mean, I think you could probably squeeze a few more, maybe a hundred, maybe a hundred watts, hundred or 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 a couple of hundred watts out of it if you really wanted to, by adjusting the bias level. Because I've actually got the bias level. It's only uh, 200 milliamps per transistor. I think uh, you can go a bit higher, which will give you a little bit more. But then you risk blowing the things up. So that's the power output. It does work. I haven't tried it, I mean, I haven't done any other tests like linearity and all the rest of it. Because um, I'm going to be using it on CW, so who cares? Who cares if it's linear or non, not linear? With a key, it doesn't matter. And then you've got the power supply. These things are really current hungry. They just love current. 50 volts from a uh, LTEC flat pack 2 server power supply. That's a 2 kilowatt version, and that will provide the current and the power supply for this. So what I'm going to do, I am going to do some metal bashing. I'm going to put this into a box, build up a water cooling system. And so the next time we meet up, it will show you the finished article.